How to make 2018 your best year ever. Now, I want to say this is originally supposed to be for my employees, but I thought I would share it with the world. How to make 2018 your best year ever. I got bad news and good news. I'm going to give the bad news first, like the Godfather says. Bad news is that most people break their New Year's resolutions within about, I don't know, a week. But a small percentage of people transform their lives. And so if you work for me or you're just listening to this, I'm going to direct it to the people who work for me because I spend millions of dollars on employees and staff. And 2018 is going to be a year where things changes. I look back at 2017, I'm like, there was good, there was bad in my life. There was things I would do over. But new day, it's like the tide, like the ocean. New day, new beginnings. New year, new beginnings. So here's what I have to say. The bad news is, without something pushing you, you're not likely to change. And that's just, you know, people say, oh, that's pessimistic. I'm not an optimist. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. If I look back on my life, it takes a push. Something has to push you. Or else humans are what scientists call risk averse. They don't change. You study the human brain, by the time you're 25 years old, something called neuroplasticity, there's less and less of it, meaning open, change. You try to teach a two-year-old a new language, they pick it up in a month. You try to teach an 80-year-old a new language, in fact, they can probably never learn it with the correct accent. I'm not saying you shouldn't try to learn if you're 80 years old. I'm saying let's just be real. 2018 should be the real, the real year where you're real with yourself. So that's the bad news. Most people, one week, a New Year's resolution, maybe some people last a month. They say, oh, last year I did this, I procrastinate. Procrastination will kill you. It's the killer of hopes and dreams. Laziness. Maybe bad handwriting too, right? Procrastination, laziness. Fear, anxiety, all these things stem from one thing. You need something pushing you. So to those of you who work for me, I'm going to be the one pushing you in 2018. And I'm not, you know, some people go, oh, don't be a jerk. Don't micromanage people. I'm not going to be a jerk, but I'm not going to let you jerk me around. You work for me, you're going to get work done. I'm going to help you get work done. 2017 was a year. It was what it was. Forget the past. 2018 is where you're going to get 10 times as much done with half the effort. Every one of you listening, make this your goal. This is a minimum. You don't work for me. If you work for me, the goal is 10 times with half the effort. But maybe that seems hard. So just make a simple goal. Twice the results in 2018 for half the work. If you can get that, you can do big things. You got to work hard, but you have to work smart. This is the working hard. This is the working smart. Some people just work hard and they stress themselves to death. They forget to take a break. They forget to relax. They forget to work out. They just try to two exit. But you got to do this at the same time. You have to reduce stress. Stress is a killer. Part of the reason people procrastinate and they're lazy is because they don't want to get stressed out. But what if there was a way in 20 to 18, if you work for me, I'm expected 10 times the result with half the stress. If you don't work for me, pick your goal. Some of you are going to pick more than 10. Some of you will say, ah, that's not possible. Oh, it is possible. I see it financially for some people. They make 10 times the money in one year with half the labor. I've done that. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19 years old. I look back at some of the years. I was pushing myself 10 times harder than the year before, but I wasn't doing it efficiently. So here's a few things. Here's where the push comes from. Some practical things to make 2018 the best year of your life. Number one, find a force that will push you. In general, let's look at what generally pushes people. The good and the bad, because a lot of it's good. You have to find a force that will push you. For the average person, they're pushed by stress, being broke, and loss. 
you lost something. It could be a person, it could be someone you're dating, it could be an opportunity, it could be a business, it could be a business partner. Something was lost. And this becomes the force that pushes most people. But there's a problem with this. Scientists found in your brain there's something called dopamine. Okay? Dopamine is released when you do something well. It's a reward hormone, uh, uh, chemical in your brain. It's not a hormone per se. It's a chemical. Dopamine. That's why people take ecstasy, MDMT, coke. All these things affect dopamine receptors. But we won't talk about, hopefully not going to do more coke in 2018. But when you fail, the opposite happens. Other things are released. Sometimes it's cortisol. That's a stress chemical in your, in your body. Okay? So what happens is if the only thing that's pushing you to do bigger and better things is these, then you're negatively reinforcing yourself. And there's a problem. I just, there's a fascinating study. I, I mean, I'll try to put a link below, but they looked at people's brains and we have these little thing called dopamine receptors. They're not like hairs, but I'm just drawing them that way for visual effect to understand. And basically that's where the reward touches and then the dopamine's released. So the more you have of these, the more you experience life in a positive, fulfilling, rewarding way. What happens is the more you fail, scientists find your body says, oh, we don't need these. And it's, you start losing them. And what happens is that makes you less ambitious. And what happened in the school system that's destroyed basically society is negatively reinforcing. They tell kids, ah, oh, work hard, do your homework, and then we're going to give you tests, boring stuff, force you to memorize it. Nobody's interested. The teachers, a lot of them, aren't even interested in the subject. People lose dopamine receptors around self-educating. So the average person, once they graduate college, doesn't read a book for three years, a nonfiction book. Why? They're so burnt out because their dopamine receptors have been negatively affected. But here's an interesting thing. There's a handful of people who go down a different path in life. They don't have just stress being broke and lost pushing them. And what happens is they actually grow new receptors. They become more ambitious. The more receptors you have, scientists find you become more ambitious. So it gets easier to not procrastinate. See, when you're ambitious, you don't procrastinate. Think of your friend who's the least ambitious person. What's a trait you'll find in their life? They put everything off. They procrastinate. That's what no ambition means. So it's actually a problem that might not even be your own fault. The school system or your childhood might have rewired your brain for failure. So you find yourself only succeeding by massive pain. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I'm broke this month. I better work hard. Oh man, I lost everything. I'm so stressed out, but it doesn't really push you in the right direction. In fact, this force that will push you, this is where you want to go in 2018, it might push you backwards. So there's a force that's pushing you, but it ain't necessarily pushing you in the right direction. So what is the force besides stress, being broke, and lost that'll push you forward? It's so common sense. They're going to be like, I already know that, Ty. Well, good. It's not what you know. It's what you do. So then do this in 2018. It's people or a person or a group of people. You change your environment socially in 2018, you will be pushed. It's almost impossible to self-correct our courses. It sounds great and there is an element of self-correction. But generally we're built as humans to learn socially. There's a great book on this. Uh, what's his name? Matt Lieberman. Forget the name of the book, but it's I know, it's called Social. He's a UCLA top neuroscientist. And he said, man, we're built to do everything in groups, to learn in groups. He has these machines, these fMRI machines. And basically what these machines do is they measure responses in your brain. And he said, even when you sleep, most of your dreams are social. You usually dream about interacting with a person. You rarely, he said, have a dream about a rock. I mean, once in a while, maybe if you're doing some mushrooms, you might have a dream like that. But for the most part, your dreams are like, oh, this person, or like I'm in a building and there's people. I sometimes have this dream. 
I play basketball, varsity high school basketball, and I always have this dream, even to this day, that I'm like on the court and I can't go fast. So they're like, dribble the ball up court because I play point guard and I'm just like going really slow. But it's a social dream. There's people interacting with me. Sometimes scientists think the reason we have dreams is to teach where we reenact scenarios before they happen so we'll have a mechanism to cope with it when it finally does happen. And so people getting mad at you is a situation you learn to cope with in dreams. Now back to reality, real life when you're not asleep, you're going to learn socially. So you're going to overcome laziness, procrastination, all these traits that are negatively affected 2017. You're going to change 2018 by changing the people or maybe adding one person in your life or one new group. You can't hang out with the same people, the same ratio that you did in 2017 and get the same results. It's impossible. Joel Salton, my first mentor when I was 19, told me, Ty, there is no change without a change in routine. And what's the routine you should change first? It's not just what time you wake up. It's not just you know your daily routine on mundane things. What's the biggest part of our life? Social interaction. So I hope you'll change your social routine for 2018. And here's a simple test. One of my friends, Clifford Lerner, he built a publicly traded company. He just wrote a book on how he lost 50 million bucks and made it back and all this stuff. And he had an interesting, interesting little point. I post them on my Snapchat if you follow me on Snapchat. By the way, a little side note, Odell Beckham Jr. was here today, uh, tonight. And interesting thing, you know, he's a top NFL player, one of the greatest catches of all times. And he goes, you know, I used to struggle with procrastination, Ty. I said, you? Top athlete in the world? He goes, yeah. And I said, did you overcome it? And he said, yep, it's gone now. So that's good news. Let that be a little side note. Hope. It can be gone. It can go away. It's a bad habit. So when we're talking about here, you know, we're talking about this social routine. This is what Clifford Lerner told me. He said, ask yourself this simple question. And this pertains to somebody you're dating. I won't get into marriage. I'm not married, so I'm not going to speak on that. Dating, business partner. Friends, co-workers, I mean, in a sense, this even applies to family, but I'm going to stay out of the family thing. I don't want to get in the middle of that. He said, ask yourself, if you could go back in time to the day you met this person or this person or this person, would you do it over again? So let's say you've been dating someone for a year. Think back to the day you met them, knowing what you know now about them. Now you spent a year with them. Would you date that person again? Would you do it? And if the answer is no, you got to part ways now. You got to build a plan. Maybe you can't do it overnight, but you got to get out of that. If you got a business partner that looked like a, five years ago, you got in business with them and you thought they'd be the greatest business partner and now you've gotten to know them and you're like, oh my God, it's a nightmare. Ask yourself, if you could do it all over again, would you still be business partners with them? If the answer is no, then it's time to move on. Employees, if you own a business like me, ask yourself, on day one, if I'm hiring that person, knowing what I know now about them, would I keep them in my life, in my business? The answer is no, then get rid of them now. Same with coworkers, same with your boss, everything. So you, this is what you gotta do in 2018 because there's only so much time in a day socially. Dr. David Buss, one of my mentors, he's a former Harvard professor, teaches at University of Austin, one of the preeminent evolutionary psychologists of all time, wrote the textbook for Yale and Princeton and all this. He told me that there's a competition for good people. And you, there's a competition with your own 24 hours you have in a day, meaning if you're hanging out with these three people that you've always hung out with, that were bad influences on you, you don't have time to inject three new amazing people into your life. It just, there's only so much time in a day. Then there's also only so much glucose in your brain. We get tired. You have limited time, so you better focus. So what you must do is ask yourself, which of them got to go? Warren Buffett, the billionaire investor said every year, ask yourself, what's one thing in my life that I've outgrown? And get rid of it. It can be an idea or it can be a person. Now, some of you don't need to get rid of anybody. You're the lucky one. Some of you need to, you need to clean the whole slate. I'm just gonna, like some people say, oh, don't. that's too rough, Ty. 
Again, I'm not an optimist or a pessimist. I'm a realist. Look at the facts. If everyone around you is dragging you down, everybody got to go. If everybody around you is amazing, nobody has to go. It's not our, you know. But the odds are it's like clutter. Because it doesn't just mean they're bad people. Maybe you just have a different view now. Maybe you've changed and they changed, but you changed in opposite directions. So it's not always judging them. Don't make 20, you know, one of my goals for 2018 is not judging people, but I want to be a judge of my own social circle. So I don't want to judge them and go, oh, well, they're bad people. But I might just say, you know what? They're great people, but we don't care about, we have, don't have the same interests. That's not judgmental. That's just being objective, logical. Yeah, it would be like this. If you have a friend who used to watch basketball games together, they come to you one day and say, I don't like basketball anymore. You stop watching games with them. Common sense 101. But what we do, because humans don't like to change, is go, oh, I got such great memories watching basketball with Bob. Well, Bob's not going to be a good person to watch basketball with. He doesn't care about basketball anymore. Same with dating. Same with business. Maybe you met, you had a similar vision for life. You're friends. And all of a sudden, boop, they go the other way. No tragedy in that. Remember this. One of the most powerful forces on this planet is evolution. And I'm not just talking about, you know, maybe you don't believe in the full story of evolution. Maybe you're religious and that's not, that's not what I'm getting into. But within life, your life, you must evolve or you die. And there was a professor in the 1960s, Professor Megason, and he summarized Charles Darwin. And what he said was, it's not the smartest, not the smartest or the strongest that survive. Some of you are trying to survive your situation by just smarts and strength. Some of the people that I know in the worst situation have PhDs and 150 IQs. They're smart. Some of the people that I know that are having horrible lives, they're strong people, they're resilient, but they forgot one thing, but they're still suffering. Because he said, it's not the smartest or the strongest that survive. It's the most adaptable to the environment in which they find themselves. This is the universal law of planet Earth. Maybe you'll go live on a planet like Mars. Maybe you'll head out with Elon Musk. Until that day, you're on Earth. Or you're dead. Then you go below the Earth. Dust to dust, we all go. Please, May 2018, the year of adaption. And specifically around your social circle. Adapt with your social circle. Don't look at it like, oh, well, you know, I, I'm just going to be smart and strong and just, I'm just going to tough it out. These are my friends. Uh, once I make a friend, I spend all my time with that friend, no matter if they, no, forget that. It's not the strongest or the smartest who survive. Now, you can be loyal, but again, be loyal to people who are loyal to you. If the loyalty is gone, then why do you can be loyal? Alan Nation, my second mentor, told me, when you're playing poker and you're in a room at the table, after 30 minutes, if you haven't figured out who the sucker in the room is, you're the sucker. And some of you, 2017 was a year where other people made you into a sucker. Don't be the sucker. I forget what number I'm on, but I don't know, three. Make it up. Don't be the sucker. And the number one way you'll become a sucker is with keeping the wrong people in your life. Now let's get in a little more advanced than I gotta go. It's the middle of the night. I just had a little inspiration to do this. Primarily for my company, but I thought I would just put this out there. Maybe you get some benefit, maybe not. It helps me collect my thoughts sometimes to write stuff out and just do these little dumb vlogs. But number five, if you want a simple litmus test, simple test, on who specifically needs to go. There's this, there's a few tests out there scientists develop. One's called the dark triad. One's called hexaco. Okay, these are highly scientific. Some people don't believe in personality tests. <laughs> Get with the program, it's 2017, uh, 2018. You don't think they can measure personality, they can measure everything else. You don't think they can measure personalities. You think humans are snowflakes and every little person's. And then how can doctors map out our body? Because we're about all the same with slight variations. That's what personality is. 
humans, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We got four or five, you know. You ever see Maslow's? Boom. You got physiological things. You have safety. You have love. You have respect or social status, you could call that. And then you have higher purpose. So, I mean, humans, Maslow discovered that we all are driven by similar things. We have very similar DNA in many ways to animals. And humans are very similar. We are. We're different in our own little way, but less different than you think. And so these tests here that were developed at universities, this was developed by a guy, a university professor up in Canada, Hexaco, fascinating study, fairly complicated. It's much better than things like Myers-Briggs, you know, ENTP, INFJ. Those are okay, but this is the newest science. There's a thing called the Big Five. This is more advanced. This is more advanced. These tests for different things. So you can Google these. They're free. Um, I made a test that's free that I use for people around me. Um, you can use it if you want. You don't have to pay anything. It asks for your email address to send you. If you are one of those people who are highly suspicious of everything, put in a fake email. It'll, I'll give, still give you your results, okay? Eventually, I'm gonna turn this into a business, but I haven't turned it into business. I'm always gonna do it free, but I'm gonna have some paid VIP version of it. But if you wanna go, you can go to tylopez.com slash quiz is free it really is free um but you can also just google dark i compiled all about five of the top tests in the world built by scientists into one and i had my programmers do it so i could hand this out have people take this test that are around you and just tell them take the test yourself and then have other people take it and you'll see some people will get horrific scores I had some people in my life, boy, when I discovered this test, there's a good book on this, by the way. If you want to read a good book, I'm not paid to promote this book either. I've never even met the people who wrote it. Age Factor of Personality. This book is, this should be your first book you read in 2018. Trust me, this book is amazing. It's by the guy who invented one of the tests. Like I said, I compiled five different tests, five or six into this one, but one of the main ones, Hexaco, this is the most cutting edge science. Dr. David Buss told me this is the science that has the most valid research behind it right now. It's the most updated. It was built in 2001, so it's about 15 years old, but uh, it's very up to date in terms of what he figured out, what they made. It built on top of the big five and all these. May 2018, the year you become the master of reading people. Because in order, to be pushed in the right direction so that you don't break your New Year's resolutions in one week like the average person or one month like the average person. You got to have a positive force pushing you. The positive force needs to be a person or people. But you already have people in your life, so you got to make room for the good people, or not necessarily good, the appropriate people. And you got to move out the inappropriate people. We're not going to judge people. It's hard to judge people. Some people are doing their best. And it's, they're just not a good match for you, man. It's the, no one has to blame. We don't have to, oh, this person's evil. It's nothing. And some people are, but most people aren't. You learn to read people. You can either go to the free one. You can go to Hexaco. You can just Google Hexaco if you want. Or Dark Triad. You have to, there's also the attachment test by, what's his name? Levin or something like Levine. Uh, Dark Triad. There is a... There is the big five is one. There's also um, the, well, there is Myers-Briggs, which is some validity. You don't wanna build everything around Myers-Briggs. So like I said, I've compiled these five into one. So feel free to do the five, or if you wanna do it on my site, like I said, you can put your email in. I like to email people a record of what they want, but if you're one of those people that don't like to put their email in, then put in your freaking fake email. You'll still get the results. Read this book. You will make 2018 a year when you begin to read people. This is what they should have taught us in school so that you can keep the shitty people out before they get too close to you and destroy everything. And 
you can keep the good people close to you forever. This will change your life. This will make 2018 the best year of life. Take it for yourself and then get everybody you know. People, by the way, everybody loves to take personality quizzes. At first I was like, I wonder if I ask people to take this if they're going to go, oh, why? Well, if they won't take it and they're highly suspicious, that's a bad sign, by the way. Take it yourself. Don't be a hypocrite. And then just say, what do you get on this? By the way, start with your family. This is going to scare the crap out of you. Now, you can't get rid of your family. Blood is always blood. But there, you don't have to hang out with everyone in your family equally. If you've got a crazy uncle, see him on Thanksgiving and say, it's been great seeing you for 2018. I'll see you again in 2019 in, in November, right? You don't have to hang out. Start prioritizing your family to the people that got the same freaking worldview as you. Again, you can't get rid of family. Sometimes family got to go all the way. There's no doubt that some family, blood is thicker than water, but it's not thicker than common sense. You got somebody who's a truly destructive force in your life and they're your mom or your dad, you just can have a straight up conversation. You say, listen, this ain't good for me. It's probably not good for you. Let's take three years off. It'll be fine. You know, they'll probably live. And if they don't, what else are you going to do? Toxic environment? You're going to just die? You're going to just have your life degraded to nothingness? No, forget that. And use common sense. Don't overreact. You know, you're not perfect, so don't overreact to other people's imperfections. But at the same time, don't be a sucker in the room. You'll know. You need to have people that you're dating or potentially dating take this. You need to have people that, oh, hell, you better do this before you get a business partner. Or you, I can predict your future and it's going to be pain. That's from a whole Rocky movie. I think it was Mr. T in one of the Rocky movies. He goes, I got a prediction. They go, what's your prediction for the fight? He goes, pain. That is most people's life when the school system didn't teach us to read people. What's more practical than understanding that scientifically validated psychology and uh, you know personality attributes of other humans. What's more important? Do you think learning, teaching kids geometry and the hypotenuse of a triangle is more important than this? School system scammed us all, my friend. Trust me, whoever built these school curriculums, they left out like, oh, well, what about that? What about the science of dark triad tests for narcissism. Some of you have major narcissists in your life and I got bad news for you. If you got major narcissists in your life, you're probably a narcissist too. There's different forms of narcissism. Some of you are introverted narcissists. But dark triad is gonna show you, you know, narcissism. Oops, there we go. It's also gonna show you something called Machiavellian. Machiavellianism. Machiavelli, you probably remember from school. This is, these people here love themselves and don't give a shit about you. They have what's called unequal WRTs, welfare, uh, WTRs. This is a scientific term, welfare trade-off ratios. Basically, you do a lot for them and they do a little. That's an imbalanced welfare trade-off ratio. You want welfare trade-off ratios to be approximately one-to-one. -one. That means you do one nice thing for them. And lo and behold, within a week or a month, they're doing something nice to you. Not because you're keeping track, but because it happens naturally. Good people naturally. Like I have a business partner. It's funny, over a year, I didn't even think about it. When we go out to eat, I pick up the bill. Sometimes two times in a row. But over a year, it like equaled out. He was good people. A good experience with a business partner. I've had people who have fucked up WTRs. That's narcissism. Machiavellianism is people who are sneaky. They have a cynical view on life. They're always trying to get one up on you, but they're doing it in a sneaky way. Narcissists will often do it to your face. They go, I love myself. I don't want to help you. A narcissist sometimes is uh, better to have in your life because at least you know they're a narcissist. Machiavellian... Smile to your face, say they love you, they're your best friend, and then behind your back, they're doing sneaky things. And then you have psychopath. Psychopathy is the technical term or way to pronounce it. So these are the psychopaths, which is basically not necessarily a murderer, but it's people with very low emotionality on the hexaco score. So, and this is hard to change, by the way, if you have a psychopath in your life, 
Dr. Buss told me it's basically impossible for a psychopath to stop being a psychopath. It's hard. Narcissism, Machiavellian, this is something that these two are somewhat genetic. This is pretty much all environmental. This comes from bullying, bad upbringing, abuse, makes people Machiavellian. Most of the people, it's not their fault, but um, you still can't hang out with them. These people have low empathy. So they just can't create emotions about you. You could, you could have a horrible situation. They just can't go, oh, I feel bad. They want to, but they can't. And so that's what dark triad is testing for. Hexaco tests for 25 other traits. Big, there's big categories. There's five big categories, H for. So that, that's one of the tests. And one of the things you need to learn to read it. Um, you also, in the Hexaco score, so H stands for honesty, humility. It's somewhat related uh, to the dark triad. And E's emotionality. This checks them for the psychopathic and highly anxious people. Be careful, our society is producing massive levels of anxiety. I've tested people, it's insane. I've tested thousands of people, myself personally. I had, there was someone, a friend of a friend, this girl brought a friend over, I, never, I was out playing basketball, there's 20 people here. I started talking to her, she took the dark triad test on the page before, and the hexaco, her low emotionality. I was joking around, I was like, you killed somebody, didn't you? And her face just went, and I realized, uh-oh, I opened a can of worms. Over the next hour, we kind of talked privately. She told me I'm the first person in the world. She admitted that she killed somebody. She hit him over the head with a pipe. They were bullying her. This, These tests tell the truth. Remember, you're not judging them. They're telling you. It's just a series of systematic questions where they reveal themselves. It's much better, by the way, than judging with your own gut. A lot of times we, I mean, your gut is important, but sometimes we overtrust our gut. And I've judged somebody by how they look. I remember I knew somebody who had a tattoo all over their face. My first thought was this person's crazy. They did the test. Now some people lie on the test, but the tests are very well built. I would say only about 2% of people trick the test. It does happen, but this person got a very normal score. And I realized they just like tattoos. Nothing wrong with them. We judge too quickly and we judge the people sometimes who look great on the outside, but they turn out to be assholes. There's a lot of those. They smile to your face. So Hexaco, it tests for extroversion. That's what the X stands for. Agreeableness, this is massive. Don't have friends that aren't agreeable. That's why I said if you ask your friends to take the quiz and they go, why should I? Huh? They're not agreeable. It's annoying. It, it, this is a big one. C is conscientiousness. All you entrepreneurs, hiring people, business partners. This is the most correlated with wealth. Okay, and then O is openness to new experience. These are open-minded people. Now, each of these break into sub-facets. Honesty, humility breaks into four. So it's sincerity, fairness, uh, greed, avoidance, and modesty. Emotionality breaks into four, too. So you have um, fearfulness, anxiety, fearfulness, anxiety, uh, sentimentality, and dependence. That's the four. Extroversion breaks into a series. It's like social boldness, social self-esteem, um, liveliness and something else. This one, extroversion, you know, I like introverted people. This one is less predictive, although this is predictive of other things, which is a whole nother conversation. Agreeableness is massive. So this is gentleness, patience, flexibility, and forgiveness. You, some of you hanging out with people have low forgiveness. So any little thing you do wrong, they hold it against you for 45 years. That's not a person that you probably want to build your life around in 2018. If you want 2018 to be the best year ever, it's got to be the best year of people around you. You think it's just going to magically be the best year because it's a new year on a calendar? There's no magic in a calendar. Calendar is man-made. You're just making it up. But you can make it up for the good. You just pick a day. That will make my life better. 2018 is a good start. Conscientiousness is built around four sub-facets too. You have... Diligence, that's hard working. You have prudence, making good decisions. You have uh, organization. Some people are just disorganized and sloppy. And then the, the last thing you have is uh, perfectionism. Some people just literally never double check their work. You know, you see that. So that's related to money. And opening a new experience has things like altruism, uh, people who like art, for example, aesthetic appreciation, they call it and you have creativity. And so th this one is more related to IQ, um, but there's worldview things here. Like I said, 
you may be dating someone who's perfect person overall, but not perfect for you because I've had this situation. I like to travel. I've dated people who don't like to travel. doesn't matter how great they are here. If they don't want to travel, I like to travel. It's part of my worldview. It's not going to be a fit. So I will not have the best year ever if they're in my life, no matter how great of a person. That's why I say we're not judging people like we're some moral, you know, morally perfect person. We're not. Nobody is. But we're judging people by a set of attributes. Like I said, go to tylopez.com slash. Now, I have a more advanced quiz. If you want this one, I think it's that full quiz. This one's longer. So you can do the short one at tylopez.com slash quiz. Or you can do the full quiz. This one will take you like six minutes. This one will take you about 20. So for some people, 20 minutes in the modern world. It's like, I ain't taking no 20 minute test. I'm so ADD. I got a fucking oh, Instagram feed. Oh, focus for 2018 too. That's a little side note for you. By the way, that's related to conscientiousness. Part of being able to be diligent is to be able to focus. All right. So last thing that I'll say. So we talked about social circle. That was the big thing I talked about for 2018. But I think, I think I'm going to talk about this focus thing just to end whatever we're on. Number five. Look, the reason I talk about social is it gives you something to focus on. But let me step back. Some of you can't focus because... Let's just face it. You know social media makes money by making you unfocused. Scientists have studied how Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of these apps have created addictions. And that's how, why the people who own them are the richest people in the world. Now, I use social media, so I'm not going to say don't use social media. A little practical tip for 2018. Turn off all notifications. On my phone, I don't have one notification on. So if you have an iPhone... Go to settings, right here. Go scroll down to notifications. Uh, where is my notifications? Right there. Turn everything off, look at mine. Show previews, never. Off, 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 off. Every single one is off, okay? Because I'm not a sucker. I use social media, but social media is not gonna use me. I'll look at my Facebook when I want to, not when Mark Zuckerberg wants me to. Dopamine's released by these apps. It's literal physical addictions created by these. Again, you can use social media, but don't let it use you. So just a little practical thing. Turn off the damn social media notifications. Instagram will be there. You got to be reminded every time someone DMs you. Why? Are you too dumb that you can't remember that Instagram has notifications? If you can't remember it, that means it's probably not important. So it's a win-win situation. You got more time and less distraction. So focus in 2018. I gave you the first thing to focus on, which is your social life. You're gonna have to focus. You know, I, I don't know how to draw a horse very well, but I'll just use a square with a head. Because every time I try to draw, people are like, you're horrible at drawing. So I am horrible, so horse. I used to have a horse and they put these things on the side of horses right here. They're called blinders. They don't really blind the horse, but they the horse can only see straight ahead. And the reason they do that is because when you're out on the road with a horse, I lived with the Amish for two years, if a car, big car comes by and the horse sees that out of the corner of their eye, they get scared. And I actually knew a guy, he was driving along the side of a road, there was a cliff on the edge, that he didn't put the blinders on that horse to focus the horse. A big truck was coming, the horse saw it and kind of went like that aside. Boo! Now he didn't die, but he went right off the cliff. Got injured. <laughs> Got thrown off three, four, five, six months rehabilitating from their injury. That's a good metaphor for people. You need to put your blinders on and focus straight ahead for 2018. What do you want out of 2018? More money, more happiness, more time, more freedom. Focus that brain on that thing. You can't be. This is the average person's brain in one second. They want to focus on, let's say they're trying to improve their business. Well, they also think about, oh, I got a DM. Oh, okay, Snapchat. Oh, well, yeah. oh, my mom's calling me. Oh, I wonder, you know, <laughs> what happened on the next Game of Thrones episode? Focus. It can be as simple as, for example, 
Make a time when you check all your social media. I do it. I ch try to check it once a day. Now, I'm in the business of social media, so I do check it a little more, but my personal side, I try to wake up, focus, and I just go through all my apps one by one and get it out of the way. 15 minutes, you know? I, I have a lot of social media followers, so it sometimes takes me a little longer. I got 13 million or something, so I get a lot of DMs, but still, I'm not gonna check them all. Be real. Why? Just because, you know, so if you got 1,000 or 2,000 followers, whatever, 5,000, I used to have 100 followers. It took me 10 seconds a day. And then I don't need to check it. The average person at work is checking their email, they said like 20 to 50 times an hour. What a waste of life, man. Don't waste your life. Tim Ferriss talks about this in, in, in the uh, four hour work week. Now things have changed since that book was written. That's why I said now, turn off notifications, put your blinders on, look straight ahead to the goal. Instead of having the mind that's all over there, just focus on one thing at a time. Confucius, the great philosopher, Chinese philosopher said, the person who chases two rabbits catches zero rabbits. You chase two things at the same time, you get zero. So just focus on one. Now you can get like an income. You want to have multiple streams of income in your life. The average millionaire has five to seven streams of income, different ones. But they didn't build them all at once. They build them one at a time. Right? You may want to have a mansion, but you got to build one wall at a time. Sure, you want a house with many rooms. you got to build one wall. You can't go, all right, let me nail one board over here, go across the house. That's how most people build. Focus. Remember what a laser is. A laser is, here's the sun. You wake up today, the sun doesn't burn you. Right? It doesn't burn you. I mean, unless you stay out for a long time, but if you just go about your day normal, the sun's rays, they're diffused. They're diffused, so here's you. But God help you if someone takes a magnifying glass right here and concentrates that all those rays that are hitting it into one spot on your body, it'll burn a hole right through your body. That's what a laser does. It takes diffused light, focuses it. That's how you destroy your problems your procrastination, just focus. Put the blinders on, turn off some notifications. Some of you trying to do too many things. You must, there's a good book, another book you can read in 2018. It's called The One Thing by Gary Keller. I recommended this book for many years. I don't get paid to recommend it, although I think I made it a bestseller again. I think it was a bestseller and then it kind of faded out and then I started promoting it. Never got any money for that, but I don't care. A lot more important things than money, like spreading the word on a good book. The One Thing by Gary Keller. And one of the things he says is when you focus, you also have to learn to embrace the chaos. Some of you are doing too much. So you gotta let some things go and just embrace the chaos. So let's say, for example, you're doing jujitsu, karate, going to the gym three times a week, doing yoga. Well, you probably can't do all that. You're driving your kids, picking them up here. You're going to have to say, what do I let be chaotic? What will suffer? In Somebody, something's got to suffer in 2018. What is it? What's going to suffer? You cannot increase without something decreasing because there's limited time. So make your decision what you're going to focus on, and that also entails what you're not going to focus on. Something's got to go. Some of you, it's got to be less video game time. Some of you has to be less TV time. Some of you has to be less social media time. Some of you, it has to be, you know, I don't know. We can go through hundreds of things. I don't know you. Pick your thing. What's going to de decrease so that you can also, something else can eat increase. Okay? So I got to go to bed because I got focus for tomorrow. But that's all I got to today. For those of you who work for me, this is not optional if you work here. For those of you who don't work with me, which is 99.9% .9 of you, take the good and get rid of the bad. And um, hopefully there's one thing in here that'll help you make 2018, trust me, reading people. I've learned many things from many mentors. Nothing is a bigger regret in my life than somebody at 18 not teaching me how to read people. 
I, you know, I, I, I was lucky in some ways. You know, I grew up with a single mom. Not, you know, things weren't given to me like some people had, which is fine. But first thing I learned from a mentor was like business and marketing and making money. And that's been not as hard for me in life because I learned from smart people. But nobody talked about how to read people. You know, not in elementary school, junior high. I mean, people have their little theories. Like, oh, blah, blah, blah. but like they don't have a systematic focused way to read people. And if I could go back in time and time machine right now, psh, I wouldn't ask to learn how to make more money. I wouldn't this, I wouldn't that. I would say, teach me as young as possible how to be a master of reading people. And then everything else will just fall into place. You'll make more money. You'll be happier. You'll get 10 times done with less stress. You'll overcome your laziness and procrastination by having amazing people around you who then you learn by osmosis. So that's why I said, in order to overcome laziness is not the answer most people expect to hear. Most people expect to hear, you know, I don't know, wake up early or something. It's not that. You only learn socially. And so I hope 2018 is a year when you look back and you go, man, some people had to go and they were replaced by much more aligned people, aligned with your worldview with your goals and you go, I didn't even procrastinate even though I'm a procrastinator. I didn't, we just kind of did our thing and it worked out. That's how it should feel in 2018. Don't work so hard. I mean, in a sense, work harder, but it shouldn't feel like you're working. There's a great book called Flow by Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi, which basically says, but you want to get in a state where you're working hard, but it doesn't feel like work. When that is achieved, and that'll come from being on the right team, like Odell Beckham, you know, plays football at Giants. Uh, you know, James Harden was over here at the house, plays for goal, uh, plays for Houston. Chris Paul there. When they're playing the game, they're working hard. They're running the average six to seven miles, but they enjoy the game. They're in what's called flow. If you're noticing the hard work, that means something else is wrong. So you should be able to get rid of your procrastination in 2018 without working that hard on it. Work on the domino of reading people and fixing your social circle in 2018. And as the domino falls, other things will get fixed by that one domino. Procrastination, laziness, you know, even depression. A lot of times we're depressed because it's our body telling us something's wrong. Not always. Some Sometimes depression is, you know, chemical. Sometimes it's out of your hands. But there is no doubt that there is situational depression, I mean, you've got to change your situation. Depressed people will make you more depressed. Now, if you're a doctor, you need to be around depressed people. That's a whole nother talk. I won't talk too much on it. I'm not a psychologist or a doctor, but some common sense is okay. Sometimes you don't have to be a doctor to get it. If everybody around you is always sad, you're going to be fucking sad. <laughs> it's just welcome to planet Earth. If everyone around you has a cold, you're more likely to get a cold. Let's just be real. No matter what your immune system is. If everyone around you has Ebola, those two doctors that went to help in Africa, which was very valiant of them to help people who had Ebola, they eventually died of Ebola. You catch what's around you. And the good news, you can catch good things. So, you hang out with good people. Leave a comment below. Bookmark this page. Leave a comment. Tell me what you need to change in 2018. Maybe leave out the people's names so you don't piss them off, so they don't get mad at me. I don't want to get in between your drama. If you stop hanging out with your mama, don't want your mom calling me. So that's why I stayed out of family. Pick the people. Pick the obvious ones first. They got to go. Don't get too picky. Don't get rid of everybody. Some of you are going to turn into hermits, which sometimes has to happen, but that's not a good solution either. Get rid of the obvious cray-cray people in your life. The narcissist, the massive narcissist, the massive Machiavellian, the people who suffer from psychopathy. Don't try to fix them. Some people say, but Ty, then who's going to help them? Well, are you a trained doctor? Don't be doing surgery if you're not a trained doctor. For those of you listening who are advanced therapists, psychologists, you can work on them. You know, if you're an everyday, I'm not, I'm not a psychologist. It's not my job. If somebody has a heart attack out there, I don't go... You must work with me. I go, go to a hospital. Some people have to get help. And by the way, there's a whole nother conversation. What happens if your score is bad? Um, 
But read The H Factor Personality. It's a game-changing book. Read that one for, first. Then you can read The One Thing by Gary Keller. You can read Flow. Um, Tylopez.com slash quiz. Check out your scores. Hopefully you don't get two traumatic ones. Talk to you soon.